Hello, my friends. Today I'd like to give you just a few thoughts of mine on a short story I recently listened to on audiobook called The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And I'll give you first a summary, brief summary of the book, and then uh, some of my thoughts on it, my analysis. And just to foreshadow what the main thrust of that analysis is, is I think Wells was giving a warning with this book. I think that the time machine is a cautionary tale, and uh, not for the average person, but for the elites. So you have to understand, Wells was in sort of the inner circles, and you could see this with... Uh, his writings like The Open Conspiracy, where H.G. Wells predicts that uh, the political future of the world is a one-world globalist government uh, that is ruled under socialist principles. And uh, we could see that that sort of is beginning to make its way to fruition, so I do believe that Wells was writing with an elite audience in mind, so it's good to keep that in mind when you read his other works. But first, let me just give you a brief summary, and then we'll get into that sort of analysis. So the, t the time machine is about a man who, would you guess it, travels in time. And uh, I'll just skip all the pseudoscientific nonsense uh, about time travel and let us just assume that this is the case. He travels in time 800,000 years into the future. And what this man finds in the future is not at all what he expects. What he's expecting is uh, a super advanced race of humans that can do whatever they want and have mastered everything and are just at the absolute peak of anything that he could possibly imagine of science and technology and uh, just social development and everything. He thinks that what he's going to find in the future is just a steady increase, a steady progression into perfection. But instead what he finds is a race of diminutive beings that are very childlike and stupid and weak. He finds a bunch of people who do look like humans and the main character surmises that uh, these are the descendants of humans. But they're no more than four feet tall, they're very weak and soft, they don't have any facial hair, they all look kind of like children. Um, their language is very basic. They only have, you know, very limited vocabulary. And, I mean, just to give you an idea of how stupid they are, when he arrives in his time machine, they believe that he came from the sun in a thunderstorm. So, these are the people he encounters, and it completely throws him off. And to, to throw him off even further, um he finds that they're living in what looks like the ruins of what was once uh, a hyper-advanced sort of communistic civilization with these massive palaces, these communal buildings that are enormous and carved in stone and uh, obviously took a lot of technological know-how and uh, productive energy and just, uh, it's extremely advanced architecture, extremely just enormous, big buildings bigger than you could ever imagine. But most of these buildings, he finds, are abandoned. They're just ruins at this point. And the diminutive beings, which by the way are called Eloi, uh, the Eloi are living in only a few of these giant buildings, and even the ones that they're living in are falling to pieces. 
but the ones that they're not living in are total ruins. Just everything is decaying. And yet, the Eloi have these purple robes that they wear of fine woven fabric and these intricate metal sandals that they're wearing, and yet nowhere can be found um, any sort of workshop. Or And what he finds is that the Eloi don't do anything with their time other than frolic in the sun and dance and play with flowers and have sex and bathe in the river and everything else. He's um, puzzled by this because these Eloi are clearly stupid. They're clearly weak. They don't do anything other than uh, recreational activities. And yet they're surrounded by what looks like the ruins of a vast civilization. A communist civilization, by the way. The author even uh, concludes, because there's no single houses. It's all just these huge buildings that they all live in. So that is a puzzle to the main character for a while, until he explores this well that goes deep underground and finds that living underground are another race of what must be the descendants of humans. And these are like pale, ape-like creatures that are fast and strong, but they're more animal than human. And uh, he finds that these ape-like creatures are maintaining these huge machines that must be in some way supporting the life of the Eloi above ground. And it's strange because these ape-like creatures that live underground are supporting the Eloi, and yet, as we find in the book, these ape-like creatures, which by the way are called Morlocks, will sneak up above ground at night and kidnap Eloi to eat them. So these Morlocks are supporting and maintaining these machines for the Eloi at the same time as eating them, cannibalizing them. Well, it's not really cannibalizing because they've sort of diverged into two different species, but you get my point. And what the main character concludes from this is that at one time, the Eloi must have been the decisive masters of these Morlocks. And the Eloi must have, in the past, created the architecture that we see above ground and the machines below ground. And they must have at some point had the productive energy and the intelligence and the strength to create all of this. But then, after this occurred, the Eloi began to decay. It began to weaken and wither into what he finds when he arrives there 800,000 years into the future. And again, this is mentioned in the book through the, uh, through the story told by the time traveler. The time traveler thinks to himself, hmm, what must have happened is the Eloi were a super advanced society and they did create all of this. But after creating all of this, because life was so comfortable and secure for their descendants, those descendants became weaker and stupider generation after generation because everything was taken care of for them. They were spoiled, basically. They had no reason to be intelligent. They had no reason to be strong. Because everything was provided for them. Everything was secure for them. Everything was easy and comfortable for them. So they had no impetus to develop the 
intelligence and the strength and the wits, the, the productive energy that their ancestors who actually created that system had. And there's more to the story. If you, you know, have, have a desire, check out the audiobook. It's free on YouTube. It's actually a really good story. And I do enjoy the story. Um, but my first thought about this, my first thought was that what Wells was saying and what he was predicting is that society as we know it today is inevitably going to collapse, that we are doomed to follow the same course of the Eloi. Because society as we know it today, and the system, the economic system, the political system, the social system, that was all created by people who were basically at the peak of productive energy and intelligence and strength and force of will. And that peak was the result of many centuries of hardship and struggle and conflict. And because of the, the challenges, because of the hardship, because of the conflict that many centuries of human beings, especially um, uh, and, uh, by human beings I'm referring to us, white Europeans, because of that process of generation after generation going through difficult struggles, going through challenges, overcoming obstacles, being involved in conflict, that all sharpened our wits and it forced us to grow stronger. And while we were at the peak of that strength, we laid the foundations, or I mean the elites in particular, laid the foundations for the civilization that we now live in, for the comforts, the security, the ease that we are now experiencing. And once those foundations were laid and the system, this highly complex system that required this immense amount of productive energy, intelligence, and strength to create. Once that was all in place, then every generation that followed would have an easy, comfortable, secure life. And so every generation that followed will necessarily get dumber and weaker because all of the all of the forces that were working on people in the past to make them strong to make them intelligent and to give them the productive energy required to create such a society all of those forces were removed life became easy life became secure and because of that those people who inherited the system will eventually reach a point where they can no longer support it. And society will collapse. So that was my first thought on this matter. But then I realized if H.G. Wells was intelligent enough to foresee this, and he was writing this with an elite audience in mind, then shouldn't we assume that the elites know full well that this is the case? That this is what will happen? If society is made perfectly secure and perfectly comfortable and easy for everyone? Isn't this what we should expect? Or what they would expect? 
So if we assume that the elites were expecting this and anticipated this, then we should also assume that they took countermeasures against it. So maybe the elites create a world today that we're living in. They create these wars, they create these conflicts, and like in George Orwell's 1984, they create sort of an eternal war that's constantly changing sides and shifting around, but still an eternal war in order to give themselves the opportunity to experience hardship and to have challenges. Even if it is all manufactured and staged, they're still staging it for a purpose. It's still a very dangerous game, so to speak. And that this is their way of maintaining the conditions under which intelligence and strength and productive energy are required. So maybe that would explain why <laughs> there's just war all over the world and the elites are constantly warmongering. <laughs> but after all that, I had one other thought. What if the elites do understand this, right? And that they want to maintain their own intelligence and strength. But at the same time, they want us white people to become the Eloi. As if we have sort of served our purpose and now we're living in this hyper-secure, hyper-comfortable situation and the migrants the non-white migrants that are coming into our society that are being brought in sort of represent the Morlocks and we white people because of the comfort and security that we've experienced our whole lives in Europe and America are suffering the same sort of uh, outcome as the Eloi. So I don't think that there's one particular reading of this book that is definitive, but those are just a few of my thoughts on the story. Um, but it does seem that H.G. Wells really did believe that society was going to collapse. His last, the last book he ever wrote is called Mind at the End of Its Tether. And in that book, he basically predicts that humanity is going to go extinct and that something is going to have to replace us because we have reached the end of our tether, so to speak. So, I don't know. Just a few of my thoughts. Kind of a rambly video. I do recommend you listen to The Time Machine and uh, read Mind at the End of Its Tether, too. It's kind of hard. I only read it once. He's kind of unclear throughout the whole thing. It's kind of esoteric, so to speak, but it's still worth reading. And definitely also check out The Open Conspiracy by H.G. Wells. But anyway, those are some of my rambly and inconclusive thoughts on the matter. Thank you for watching.